Hello, my soccer gamers, and welcome to the preview video for what I will call now Northeastern uh, Europe. Um, yeah, this is mainly the Bundesliga plus some uh, additional leagues, and I've decided now finally of how I will split up the leagues that you have in every video. You know at least which leagues are in there. I will also do my best to put the thumbnail of the respect the uh, uh, logo of the respective leagues into the thumbnail so that it's kind of clear these are the leagues that I'll be talking about and then I choose one picture as an action shot and maybe the headline only refers to one of these but this basically I have uh, I'm planning to do a Bundesliga video a Premier League video um, La Liga video and the Serie A video and then I pack uh, some of the other non-top four leagues into there and today we are talking uh as in northeastern europe i'm planning to put russia ukraine um the czech republic and so on in there but uh today it's only germany and austria and speaking of germany yeah now the two teams uh that, I, <laughs> that have bought jerseys uh have actually done well have won and i'm still not wearing them because i'm wearing last because they've done even better we'll talk about this towards the end of the video but i decided okay Let's put the jerseys back up there of the three teams that I have jerseys in this video. They will continue to grow. I am absolutely certain about that. But we will start in the Bundesliga, where yeah, it was not the most exciting of rounds. Uh, for the simple fact that we're not the only really tantalizing clash uh, from my perspective was the one already on Friday between Frankfurt uh, at Dortmund. And to be honest, it was not much that, uh, that much of a game because Dortmund rolled over Frankfurt pretty badly. I mean, Frankfurt had a totally off day. I took Dortmund a while, but I think they had um, Dortmund created quite some chances, which Frankfurt absolutely did not do. They were absolutely, uh, I think the best chance was a wide ranging shot from Chandler into the yeah, upper reaches of the stadium. Um, Dortmund eventually gets their lead through Piszczek, of all people. Um, then Sancho, right after the half, makes it 2-0. Holland gets the third in the 54th, and Rafael Guerrero finishes Frankfurt off. A day to forget for Frankfurt. But then also the other games, let's uh, face it, I was nothing, uh, I, at least from uh, the perspective of the table, was nothing re really exciting, but there were some exciting games. Union Berlin against Bayer Leverkusen being definitely one of them, um, with Union taking uh, an early lead through Gentner that Havertz can equalize midway through the first half. Then the game is a little bit back and forth. You know, you know that uh, Leverkusen is probably the more mature team, but uh, it was really hard work for them to uh, actually make this experience count. And it's Diaby in the 83rd after an assist by Volland, where you think, yes, they finally got the win. Nope. Bitter gets the equalizer in the 87th, and everything is settled for uh, a draw, and most Union fans being already absolutely crazy in stoppage time. Very, very late. Bellarabi gets uh, a last-ditch winner for Leo Leverkusen, which was actually a vital point for them. Augsburg Freiburg ended in a 1-1. Um, not much that I can say there. Leipzig Bremen. Bremen's ah, doesn't look good. And the problem with Bremen is that they are not that bad uh, uh, to us. They, they are they're always in the game, but they make so many sloppy mistakes and they just cannot defend. Um, um, that ball says situations very very well and so it is very quickly was 2-0 close to man chic mukiele after the half and uh adds a third one and from that moment on leipzig is cruising and probably has the worst showing at least by numbers from any of the top four teams hertha gets back on the winning uh and with a 2-1 over paderborn klinsmann is gone suddenly the winning although it was a really 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 tough win Gladbach has no problems whatsoever with uh, Düsseldorf. The game seemed to be tight for a while, but 2-2, two, two, to be honest, Hoffmann gets the 1-0. Uh, Tommy gets the equalizer a few, few minutes later. Most Düsseldorf fans are hoping for a good game. And Gladbach just makes a few adjustments. And then Stindl made it 2-1 in the 51st. Added the second one in the 77th. And Neuhaus really, uh, really kind of a touchy finish, uh, 82nd. 
it was never in doubt. With a few adjustments that they made, second half it was all Gladbach and they could um, roll over Düsseldorf and Bayern didn't even wait for the halftime. Actually, Köln Bayern was one of those where I thought, hmm, I might be able to watch this, but I want to watch something first. <laughs> what a mistake. Köln in their carnival jerseys, which uh, I think the shape on the bottom of the jersey is kind of the city of Cologne and the districts and so on. It looked a little a little bit messy, but I've seen much worse carnival jerseys for Köln. Within 12 minutes, Bayern Munich was up 3-0. 12 minutes is all that they needed, and they even played in their nondescript away jerseys. Lewandowski in the third, Koman in the fifth, Gnabry in the twelfth. Gnabry had one in the 66, and only then Uth could pull one back. Uh, Kern had actually, actually another chance for a goal, but uh, you know, Bayern easily could have, could have made three or four more. It was utter domination, and Mainz uh, and Schalke play a goalless draw. So with that on the top of the table, uh, not much changed because everyone in the top five won. The only one that drops down is Schalke, but we still have Bayern ahead of Leipzig and Dortmund. Gladbach has a game in hand, can pull level with Leipzig. So um, three-way race, four-way race, we will see about that. Um, Schalke, yeah, lost some touch. Freiburg gets a little bit back in touch, but I think... Seven, eight, I don't see those teams really, because Schalke I still think is more uh, talented than all these. Frankfurt took a big blow uh, with that loss. Uh, the two Berlin sides are now level on points. Uh, Union, because of uh, goal difference, a little bit better. Kern, yeah, <laughs> they didn't need that bad goal difference here. And in the relegation zone, it's still a long way to go. Düsseldorf right now ahead of Werder and then Paderborn. I really, really, really hope that Werder is, does not get relegated, but it does not look good. But maybe they need this for a little cleansing around. But honestly, when I see Werder, they're, all, they're not all that bad. I, I just think uh, from the whole concept of how, how they're playing, they're not necessarily made for a fight against the relegation. They're more uh, look, looking upward and it's really hard for them to kind of realize, yes, we're in the thick of it. Maybe it's low, it might be a little bit too late already. Let's see. I really hope that Werder stays in. You know where Werder is one of my Bundesliga teams that I actually really like. Let's go to Austria. All smiles, all smiles. Valentine's Day, so, uh, Valentine's Day was good for me. Absolutely good, good, good for me. I didn't even watch the game. I had it recorded. Uh, if you saw my video, we got presents. We, I really made it a family evening despite all the great games happening. I said, family evening will be together. I will not watch soccer. I'm gonna watch it in the morning. <sighs> I had to wake up early to watch that one. Salzburg against Lusk. What can I say? What can I say? Uh, this was one of the crazier games of Lusk, but um, first of all, prior to this game, Lusk has won every single away game in the league. Salzburg, I think, has not won every home 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 game, but Salzburg, but Salzburg was definitely the offensively more adept team uh, Lusk defensively. So Lusk has not conceded a goal from a header or from a distance or from a dead ball situation so far. Unfortunately, some of this changed now. But um, this was the clash. These are the two best teams in Austria. Sold out house, even if the game at this stage doesn't mean that much. Uh, it was really more of, um, let's fill it up, because they play at least three more times, once in a cup semifinal on March 1st, and they will play twice in the Champions playoff. And it is not impossible, although uh, I would say a slim chance that they also meet in the Europa League. Uh, I mean, luck of the draw can happen. Uh, I'm not saying that they will. I Salzburg probably is fa favorite over Frankfurt, although I'm not. I'm a little bit less sure Salzburg definitely is not favorite against Alkmaar. But um, it could happen. So they play at least three times more. And given the weird system, and I'm complaining about it, and I will continue complaining about it after. Everyone played everyone, so after 22 rounds, the league is separated in the top six playing for the championship and the bottom six playing against the re relegation with a whole lot of mess up with the Europa League spots. Um, but what really gets me is that the points are simply halved. 
I would propose it would be better if you just um, take the points of the opponents that you've actually played against and make a league table that way. I think it would be fairer because then every game counts full. So every game now counts only half. And so for that reason, it doesn't really matter if Salzburg would, would have uh, won against Lusk. Uh, yes, they might have had a uh, five-point lead, but uh, slash it in half it's, it's, and you're two points. Uh, if a draw doesn't end, change, change much and even a win uh, for last year. But it's the way it happened. From the get-go, Lusk, and I'm gonna spend now some time on this because this was a huge win. I know that Lusk won once in 2009, but other than that, uh, in Salzburg uh, against Red Bull was never a good uh, uh, stadium to play against because usually, even if you were well, uh, you got hammered. And uh, even the predecessor playing away in Salzburg was never an uh, easy, easy win, at least uh, during the time that I was watching. Salzburg, since the time that I'm watching Salzburg, became a force in Austrian soccer. The game started with Lusk actually being quite uh, courageous and pushing Salzburg back. But the problem is you expose yourself on the back with a high line and a high press. Salzburg took advantage of that as, as only they can. It was only luck that Salzburg did not, did not take the league. It was in a four minute uh, period. After four or uh, four minutes, uh, Okugawa, I think was his name, hit the post. Uh, then, um, another form for me. Again, a very quick counter attack, attacking move where, uh, Patsundaka hits the post. Same post. A uh, little, a little bit late, uh, later, the, um, uh, Huangli Zhang, uh, is free in front of the goalie. Goalie saves and uh, last goalie had an amazing game. And then I think it was only three minutes later that there was another huge chance. Salzburg should have taken the lead by now. But it happens as it always happens. Um, it was a throw in near the corner flag. Uh, goes in. Um, our um, main defender, Trauner, gets in, in there as well, puts his the, the header. It gets to the long post where Frieser is free and can slot it home. 1 0 for Lask. A little bit against the run of play. I mean, not against the run, the run of play, but given give, give, give the chances, um, it was against the run of play in that sense. Then um, a few minutes later, uh, a tackle on the side. The ball comes to James Holland, who takes a wide range shot, which get, takes a wicked deflection, goes in the net. 2-0 Lusk. And I think everyone going crazy already over that one in Linz. Uh, Salzburg can put one back because uh, the same change. James Holland get out, doesn't get the ball nicely out of the box, kind of uh, lampoons over. Um, Junuzovic very quickly touches the ball and uh, it is in the net um, through Okugawa uh, who hit the post before. This was actually maybe the, the least clear chance, but that's the one that went in. 2-1 and a half, uh, many people thought, yeah, Salzburg might be able to turn this around. Not so. Again, a throw-in. They cannot just defend the throw-ins. And the ball comes to Ragus, who was actually uh, scouted by Torino. I'm not sure if he will be happy there. But um, makes a wonderful move and again puts it to us along post where Fries is there. Puts it in in the 55th, uh, 56th. And it is 3-1 uh, Lusk. And then they completely shut Salzburg down. Salzburg could not find a way. Lusk still a little, little, little bit different, completely stifled them. And outside of the corner kick, where Mwepu then makes it 3-2 from a header. Yeah, that's the goal that uh, ruins the statistic for Lusk. There was really nothing coming from Salzburg. This seemed so safe. I even thought after the 2-3, oh! This seems safe, but now Salzburg Sal 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 may make a second win. No, nothing. Absolutely no, no, nothing at all. A uh, little bit of games and shit, but lost by really wasting a time at the end. But they run away three to win it and are first in the table. I. It was really more more vic vic victory, but it really shows Lusk can actually hang with Salzburg. The other games, I honestly didn't see much, but Wolfsburg, who I think is the third best team in Europe, despite the table uh, in Europe. <laughs> 
now they're not in Austria. 3-0 over Hartberg. Uh, Austria-Wien misses a huge chance with only a draw in Altach. They need every win they can get. They were helped. The Sturm Graz lost at home uh, and the Hartberg lost, so they still are in it, but they have only three games to make up a six-point a six point difference. St. Pölten plays a draw against Mödling. This is for relegation spot and rapid win. Gets a 2 0 win over Tirol, which cements their position now kind of in third. If you look at the table, it is the top two, Lask Salsa, Salzburg. Although both teams um, have not been perfect, but that's down to playing a lot, a lot of games and still dominate the league. Uh, Rapid, Wolfsburg uh, is kind of the second, and then it's Sturm and Hartberg, the two Styrian teams. And then it's the drop, and then everyone's really close together. And there's Austria Wien, a team that actually would expect to be in there. Yep. Yes, I can talk a lot about Austrian soccer, especially when Lask is playing that well. Uh, but this was just a game for uh, for the ages for me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a comment below of Bundesliga games. Or if you've seen Austrian Bundesliga, I doubt you have. But if you have, drop a comment below how you saw the games as well. Fill in what I'm missing. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. The next one will be La Liga, Liga and Liga Nosh. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.